Hi everyone and welcome to my short video tutorial on how to send email attachments to your Dropbox. The first thing you want to do is go to www.sendtodropbox.com. Once you get to this website, you'll have a link in the center of the page that says connect to Dropbox. Click on this link and you should automatically be redirected to Dropbox's login page. Here you should log in with your login details and the first thing it would ask you is whether you want to allow or deny send to Dropbox to connect with your Dropbox account. In this case, I'm going to allow. You should automatically be redirected back to send to Dropbox's website where they'll give you a new email address to work with. This email address is going to be the exact same email address that you're going to email all of your attachments and files so that they'll be added to your Dropbox folder. If you want a different email address or don't like the one that's automatically generated for you, click on I want a different address. Here enter one of your favorite words and click on get new email address and that should give you a brand new email. Uh, in this case I'm going to keep mine since I'm happy with it. I'm going to highlight, copy, paste it somewhere so that I can remember it. Below this you will have a couple of different options on how to organize your files. You can do it by subject, by date, or by the person who sent it to you. In my case, I'm going to leave it to the default settings, which is to take every file that I get and put it in an attachments folder and name it whatever the name was to begin with. You have a couple more options or settings below where it will extract zip files for you automatically, include a plain text, or an HTML copy of an email message. Uh, the reason why these settings would be useful is, let's say I were to email a lecture or PowerPoint presentation uh, labeled Chapter 2. Uh, a lot of times when you're looking back at it, you might not know exactly which course or which office project it relates to. And that's why it's a good idea to keep a little email message um, that would describe the file. And that description or email message would also be included with the attachment in the folder for the future. Um, my personal recommendation is not to check any of these boxes off since it makes a little bit of a mess in the Dropbox folder. Go ahead and click Save Settings. And from here, let's go test it out. So I'm going to go to gmail.com, log into my account. I mean, of course, you can use any other account that you'd like or Hotmail or Yahoo, Ymail, Yahoo Mail, whatever. Um, I've logged in. I'm going to compose a new email. I'm going to paste the email address that I'm working with or my personal sent to dropbox.com email address. And I'm going to email 101 useful websites to myself. This is our 101 useful websites PDF. Let's attach my file. There we go. And once it's finished attaching, I'm going to send it off. There we go. My email has been sent. So let's go ahead and check my Dropbox account. Here's my attachments folder. And you'll see the uh, regular stock stuff from Dropbox. When I go into my attachments folder, you've got an HTML copy, a .txt copy, and my actual PDF file. Of course, these were created about 12 seconds ago, so you know it was recent. If I open the HTML file, you'll see that it says 101 useful websites, and the text should include the same thing. The PDF file is complete, and if I right-click on it and click on download, or in this case, I'll open it up, check it out, see what it is. Here it is, 101 most useful websites, including the one that I'm using right now to record this video. Uh, so I'll close that up. You can see that everything worked. It's all good to go.